Hello, hello. Good morning or good afternoon, my friends, <laughs> depending from where you are watching. But I think many of you probably somewhere between Europe and the US. <laughs> this is again a little bit unexpected as always with me because I have to be in special mood to make a new uh, stream. I was thinking all day about it and decided to go with it at the end. So thank you for, for being with me, for joining. And uh, I see already a few people started to comment. Hello, Hermit. <laughs> Good evening to you. Um, I... Um, was having recently another stream which was a little bit controversial as you know uh, the, the stream was called Leviathan where I was uh, trying to discuss um, yeah this little bit controversial topic about the uh, race of nazism also the uh, occultism in, in the Third Reich and uh, also uh, later on how it influenced some kind of extremist movements uh, uh, up to modern time within the left hand path community. And I was not able to uh, uh, fully uh, monitor the chat. So later on, I found out that uh, we had a few nasty comments for, from people that probably uh, were supporting these type of ideologies. Uh, I was surprised that YouTube was so kind uh, and to leave the, the the stream so it wasn't cancelled due to these comments uh, but as I, I i said my my opinion is clearly uh, known i am a supporter of uh, normal regimes and i was just trying to explain why why these type of things were happening and are happening even uh, in current cultures especially in occultism so uh yeah i will be trying to monitor this uh these comments more i i think that majority of us are major people so if you will find out some some crazy things uh, being written just let me know and i will do some <laughs> precautions to to limit this type of uh, comments so thank you very much i i see that a lot of people are are joining and i was uh i'm going to you know, this this topic or, or this stream will be a little bit different. Um, uh, usually the Lucifer's Eon or the Eon of Lucifer streams are about new types of magic, something that uh, is very progressive, uh, uh, meta magic uh, types of things that um, I, I think are more for the for the people from from other times or from magician and magicians or practitioners uh, of the 21st century so I, I know that in previous few streams of this format we spoke about uh, radio mix uh, virtual reality uh, augmented reality meditation in virtual space and so on. and um I uh, recently did a few series of videos about grimoires, medieval grimoires, and to be honest, I I feel that uh, although these books are extremely important for uh, to know or to work with, um, it is something already too hard to grasp for us. I, I think that our uh, understanding of science, modern culture, and so on, we moved a little bit. Yeah, like it's nice to work maybe with this type of uh, old memoirs, uh, to work with these sigils in the old way, to do the invocations through the circles. But I think I was thinking recently, like, what changed this? 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 That? We do not feel we do, we have it mostly in the movies or somewhere, yeah. But modern magicians in in twentieth century developed uh, different types of uh, occult practice, like chaos magic, for example, or, or other types of uh, meta magic, let's call it spirituality. And uh, I wanted to maybe put into your uh, like attention, maybe you already know, probably many of you uh, do, 
uh, a few authors, um, let's say esoteric philosophers, uh, only one of them was, probably they were both magicians, but uh, we definitely know that only one of them was and is still a very, very interesting person doing a lot of magic and a developer of his own uh, Gnostic voodoo system, Mr. Bertio. Mm, but uh, I would like to also speak about esoteric philosopher of early 20th century, Mr. Gurdjieff or George Gurdjieff or Georg Ivanovich Gurdjieff, uh, who uh, is originally from Armenia, or, but uh, lived in France and traveled around the world and met many interesting people in his life and was later on quite an uh, important figure for esoteric thinking. But these two giants of modern um, esoteric practice, I think, are not the only one. Yeah, and they, um, what I th think, I was thinking like, what really changed our perspectives that if you look at these old grimoires, they are like nice to see these sigils, but are you going to really do it that classical way? Like it was done in the 15th century? Probably not because many of these books are full of uh, even like Christian prayers. And if you are not coming from that area, if you don't speak Latin, this spirituality is not going to move you forward or it might uh, if you like esoteric uh, like ceremonial magic like i do but it's not a lifestyle it's um, i think the change came with uh, the development of modern psychology uh because the way how we perceive spirituality differ different changed quite a lot after we started to understand uh, mental archetypes ego super ego subconsciousness we maybe these terminologies are also not correct and in 200 years the, the human mind will perceive things again differently but uh, uh, but currently i think these terminologies of modern psychology are closer to us and to our understanding or working with these things than working with 15th century magic this is a good uh, question um uh sigzilla ninezilla <laughs> nice name uh is bertio a good source for voodoo i would question how accurate it's be since he's not from that culture okay let's 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 go with your question i was not sure with who to start first because these are two examples one is uh Gurdjieff and the second one is bertio and i am studying both um, recently quite a lot and uh, uh and thank you also brett <laughs> bernhard you are very bernhard you are very nice uh, this is this is nice so uh yeah, what are my, my thoughts on techno-shamanism? Uh, I, I think I am a big supporter of this type of new ways how to approach spirituality. Uh, so um, I think if you will have time, maybe you can check, I think, the third, uh, uh, third stream where I spoke a little bit about augmented reality and doing rituals in virtual space. I am a big supporter of these things. It is it is something that is uh, I think the future of uh, we we connect so much uh, with technology these days that um, it is something that is uh, um, that we can't even avoid. I would say I will try to speak a little bit more about these type of things because also uh, it's not only techno shamanism. But if we, if you return back to uh, to Gurdjieff, uh, he is, I'm sorry, to Bertio. Uh, his book, his very famous book, so called Voodoo Gnostic Workbook, is not so new. It's from the 70s. So, at the 70s, there it was just a beginning of technology. But he already worked with computers and he already worked with some uh, initial, uh, with some initial. Uh, symbolisms from uh, created by by the binary code and so on so but uh, there was this this 
question whether I think that uh, Bertio is only good with wooden. I spoke with a few people that uh, are uh, very, um, that are considered like very ceremonial and people that really are the priests or priests of, uh, of wooden tradition and they don't like Bertio. They don't like Bertio at all. Just for you, just for those of you that would, would like to know who this Bertio is, uh, his name is Michel or Michael Bertio, and he is an author of this huge book called the Wooden Gnostic Workbook. <laughs> it is, it is uh, extremely big. It has, yeah, the pages are a little bit thick, but um, it has around 650 pages. Um, and he called it Wooden Gnostic Bird Book because he created practically his own system that is not only about Wooden. He created something that, was, that is very new, but taking the sources from Wooden, from, uh, uh, also from Shintoism, because he works with Kami, with, with the spirits of the practically of the dead within the Shintoism, and he works with Loa and uh, is heavily influenced also by other sources in this system, uh, namely uh, Neo-Pythagoreanism, so uh, magic of numbers, Gematria, angels uh, from the uh, from, from Western uh, understanding. And uh, I would say he's quite, uh, he might have been influenced also by good gifts. <laughs> uh, I, uh, this book is considered, and I would like to hear thank a few people that also guided me uh, on my like, email. They sent me a few more contacts uh, to, to look a little bit deeper into this group that is now a little bit passive. I, I know that uh, people that practice this specific system are quite rare, there are not so many of them mostly in latin america yeah but also in europe and um it means that it is what he says is practically if you if you go through the first hundred pages here he just says very similar things that i did probably in my few videos like work with your own spirituality do not go with uh that he says that all of this, it's so new that, like he says that all of these uh, techniques of the past are, uh, we should combine them as a, as a modern magician. So he's taking a lot of things from many sources and he is practically even created his own um, uh, pantheon of Loas. Loas are the spirits of Voodoo. So, so yes, he worked with the, uh, with the with the old laws, but the ceremonial Wudunists uh, hate this. Yeah, it's it's for, for them. It's considered like uh, it's uh, travesty, yeah, like to, to to do this type of uh, to do this type of things. But uh, he has a lot of rituals, how to work with uh, practically everything. He says that. It's not about just working with some kind of spirit, like in the 15th century, I work with a Smodius, I want some kind of spell. No, he says that we as a spiritual beings are practically uh, godlike. And uh, to get the best connection with the spiritual world is not to uh, work blindly with one uh, pantheon or one magical system, but to create the pantheon of our uh, of uh, practically ours own, and um, this is still happening. Imagine, for example, in his book you have like uh, Loas, then you have the spirits of the Shinto, then you have Lovecraftian Azatot, Nier Latotep, Yoxotot. Yeah, and some might say like, what is this? Like, is this even real? It's some kind of mishmash of things. But between the line, you read a lot of deep Gnostic esoteristic techniques, how to focus, how to work with Kamea, how to work with numbers and things. But he is creating the system of his own. He says, I'm not going to give you the names of the law because you are going to ask them the names that will work just for you. So it's a little bit anarchic, anarchic spiritual system. But he goes very deep into it. He, he says that to do really magic, you have to totally change your mind. You have to think 
magically and spiritually. So, for example, at the beginning he says like how to connect with the with the with the spirits. It's it's this uh, he sees spirituality practically a little bit Buddhistic in everything. He says like you are reading uh, uh, some kind of book or you are watching some kind of symbol. So try to uh, so ask the symbol about its its uh, hidden spiritual meaning. Like if you uh, if you want to understand, for example, some kind of book, and this book might have like chapters, uh, numbers of the chapters. So write the numbers of the chapters in the on uh, before you, and create a magical square with these numbers, and try to meditate over the. Uh, over the hidden numbers within the book and you will understand the spirituality of the book. It's, it's so crazy, but uh, uh, he, he means that, that everything is interconnected and if you want to ask the specific spirit to do something, create your own. Ask the spiritual realm to speak with the spirit that is good for you, call them Loa or whatever and uh, name them according to you so it's m mix of mm, psychology and uh, and and real magic and i'm starting to like it i was first like very traditionalistic like this is uh uh that yeah we have to work with only this and that and and whatever but it's not like he says like he says like there are millions of spirits and there are millions of things that work only for you that uh and you will be never able to connect with something that is not uh, each magician has different uh, way how to approach it there are different roads so if someone if you don't like voodoo for example you will not connect it with it so he's calling them voodoo gnostic workbook because he says that it's not voodoo as such it's just the spirituality in it that okay he's from that area he lived somewhere there but he created something about it, beyond it, yeah, but like, uh, imagine this, um, it's even like a heretic uh, philosophy that you will do uh, invocation of Asmodeus and you will tell him, but you are not Asmodeus, I know that you are not, many people perceive you this way, but you are some kind of energy that is connecting with me through this name that I called you like this, but uh, it's not your name. I know that it's not. There is like, there is something beyond it. Yeah, uh, and the name Asmodeus is just spiritual construct. Uh, it, it's a, co we have agreed that you exist. <laughs> yeah, you mean, you know what, like the names of the gods, uh, that it comes from the philosophy that um, if they exist, they are not named how we think they are. Yeah. Because if we work then with the, only with the if we try to understand, for example, Asmodeus, he is like that. Yeah, Belial, he is like that. There is, it's like faith. Then it's very similar to working with saints of uh, in Christianity. Like you are, you are practically uh, doing the same thing, but you just name the the object that you are trying to invoke or work with is just another name for and you want something from it what is the difference from the christian who is praying to mary magdalene and to to ask her for something or to maria yeah like like a please uh, heal me from something uh, oh holy mary please give me give me some kind of like respite or or or, or make me make my children healthy again so what is the difference if you if you do the same mental activity process than if you if you invoke Marbas and you will tell me him oh spirit that you can heal that you can heal heal me you are doing the same thing because you believe that Marbas can heal that, that, that that's a that's a big mistake in all these medieval books that they, they say this spirit does this and this spirit does that so so he says that Try to do invocation that you don't focus on the spirit you are going to invoke. Just do the invocation within yourself to work. I want to work with the energy that will do this. And I will name this energy by the name that is given to me. So it's a little bit... And he has a lot of crazy names here. So, 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 uh, that's, 
that's that's the thing like that we for, now we have a question yeah we have a question by taylor yeah and that's exactly what i am saying about yeah? <laughs> that that, uh, uh, that you are you are asking me like uh, that if you do some kind of pact with some kind of entity let's say Iblis, can you ask for a gene familiar that you can see here without any psychology, psychic skills? First of all, no. Without psychic skills, you will not connect with anything because magic does not work without developing your mental skills. Other thing is, why this? Why bliss? Why? Can you ask the the energy of of uh, that through your powers you connect with this metaverse that we call that is the realm of spirits for a familiar why you have to have a midi why you have to have this mediator this iblis because you believe that iblis is so powerful king but you can do it by yourself you can <laughs> but maybe the connection with iblis is culturally and mentally good for you because you believe in this type of but you are approaching magic through some kind of cultural filter and as uh i that's what, for example, now chaos magicians don't want to do. They say, "I don't need this mediator." I, 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 I work with the with the absolute realm of spirits, and I want to have the spirit that is going to help me, the familiar spirit, because I want it as a magician. And if and, and the spirit must, the familiar must be ready for me. So this is this little bit more advanced way because. Uh, 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 mm, and I believe that that no, that you have to have really developed mental powers for for such of uh, such communion. It does not work that way. It's so easy. Sorry, it is. Uh, you have to go through a lot of meditations, focus on on, on this type of things, and uh, without that, you will be not even successful to do it. I, I I just tell it like it is, and so it's not so easy. I think. Yeah. Uh, other philosophers or, or, or people that say like so so Bertio tells you if you work with my system create your own realms of spirits create your own gods what these gods are are they weaker or not that's a bad question whether they are weaker or no they are they are absolutely powerful you are creating the mental archetype of something you can have your uh you can you can you are connecting with the source not through some kind of cultural niveau like voodoo or 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 with the left hand pass it it, it it doesn't matter at all because all of these names when we know when you read from the history when you check sometimes of the like videos of the of the of the of the demons you know that there are so many names of these demons each it's grimoire change the name of the spirit somewhere it's uh, uh they, they are called differently. They are mis... Uh, mm, and which name is uh, correct? We we realize only that they, they are some kind of archetypes, like archetype of love, of archetype of, of anger, of, of hatred or so on. So, so, so you work with these type of energetical complexes from the modern perspective, yeah? So as, as 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 Christians are asking for for some kind of guardian spirit or something, so yeah, maybe left and path we work also with more negative energies, but there is no difference between it, and they don't care how they are being called. Uh, that uh, it uh, it maybe just limits us if we if we go into it like in this deeper way of uh, of. Uh, understanding that it's not the name they are not like in 15th century there was for example some kind of guy and he created a names yeah you know, like in, he named he, like they were created by some clever person that may be connected with the spirits and the person knew a little bit latin they they knew a little bit hebrew they knew a little bit greek and they know also that in Arabic magic there are 72 genes. So for the modern populace of Western Europe, they created Lesser Key of Salomon with 72 spirits, but not genes, because in medieval time they don't understand the name jinn. And they named them 72 spirits. 
and uh, in, uh, in, 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 let's say, in um, some magical books of uh, uh, of Arabic magic, you have you have uh, you have a jinn, the king of jinns, which is called Maimun. But the Latin guy translated as Amaimon <laughs> and, and called it like this. And if, so, uh, and from that comes all of this, our, this misunderstanding, like, oh, but Amaimon, are, are jinn spirits? Yes. Are they not? No, because they, they, it's the same thing, but it's, it, the, uh, this energy does not give a shit, whether we call it like this or that. Which is just about uh, connecting with this type of energy. And uh, mm, even these type of energies are not like anthropomorphic beings. Yeah? It's, it's, it's too naive to think about that. They, they, are, they represent some kind of... Uh, uh, archetype, something that starts our mind and the magic starts to work that way. Uh, I believe, yes, I believe, I believe that chaos magic is, uh, uh, is a more modern and, uh, more, um, it, ref it, it works for our generation more. Uh, and it works for our age more, uh, because it is beyond this basic way of uh, of believing. If if you just believe that you are connecting with Asmodeus or Iblis, you are just praying to the same idol as Christian. It's not magic. It's it's just the it just uh, it's okay. It can um, have some limited effect, but it's the same type of worship as have everyone else. Like uh, that, 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 I I don't see a difference between it's so low. Yeah, uh, it's not. Um, esoterical understanding of things so chaos magic is something that i will take uh, it, just do the experiment if you don't believe me like invoke the spirit that you are that you work with and you will tell him i will rename you now and by 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 this renaming you take the name for example lilith yeah you will invoke lilith i i i know that i'm giving you some kind of like uh it, you might be even fear, uh, fear afraid to do it, but like, like okay, and and, I, and you will take the name and you will say, no, I'm I'm trying to connect with you more, but but I have to rename you in a way that is more connecting with me, and I have power over this name because when I uh, say this name, I it will get immediately in contact with you. So I am renaming renaming you, and you will be named opposite. You will remain renamed like Flilith. T L T L T T T H or something, and you will you will write a name into this magic square, and and uh, you will remember it. You will, and I can tell you that you will have much more connection with it because it does not. You will still have the num. Um, you will still work with the same names, but uh, or you can give the name of the spirit. So, for example, the name is called. The name of the spirit is A B C D. And you will uh, you will tell the spirit that your name is represented by number A B C D. It's one two three four. Example. And you will create a sigil where there will be this number one thousand two hundred thirty four. And it will work. Maybe even more. Uh, maybe even stronger. Yeah. Or you can uh, take mathematical computer like uh, with a program and you will you will want to have like there are these uh, 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 sigil making apps and you will uh, put it into the computer and they will tell I want to have Pythagorean representation geometrical representation of this number 1300 1234 and you will get this type of uh, mathematical model and you will know that this is the sigil of the spirit that you are working with. You have the sigil of the spirit. It's it's and that's chaos magic, because uh, you you work practically with the uh, subconscious of your mind. You you put the name, you put this 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 thing that we always have in our mind just to worship some kind of gods or so on. You will make them more abstract, and this this abstract thing like. Neo Pythagoreans were saying this is the truth. Uh, the truth is in the number. The truth is in the they uh, 
you will put away this uh, this worshipping aspect. That's what I don't like on these 15th, 16th century grimoires because they are like full of prayers to God for for protection and for this and this and this and this. But it worked only for people that really like uh, could pray for eight hours. Yeah. So now we, it's different way. It's, it's, it's just a different way. Uh, there were others uh, like really mystics in the in the 20th century. Uh, this Gurdjieff, he created. Uh, who was Gurdjieff? Gurdjieff was a was a Russian was a Armenian mystic, uh, and he uh, many people thought that he was like living in uh, Russia. He was a spy of uh, Imperial Russia or so on, and lived he lived in the beginning of the century, 20th century. Then, then he emigrated to the U.S. I think I even have some of his photo. It was a strange guy. Like, like, yeah, I have. This is Gurdjieff, this this bald man. So, George Ivanovich Gurdjieff. And uh, uh, many believe that he was traveling to to Tibet and so on. But it's really true. He was speaking a lot of languages, and uh, uh, probably got in contact with the mystic Sufis. Sufis are these mysterious sects of Islam uh, that are dancing like these dervishes and uh, he was very good dancer uh, he was also like ballet ballet instructor so I, I think this is this was coming from these techniques that by movement by by dance by rotation you 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 uh, emulate the rotation of the world galaxies and so on got into the trance states uh, through it yeah and uh, he brought a lot of uh, he was even mm, a very strange person because he in the us he was got hit by a car i, I think in chicago and his spine was uh, heavily damaged so uh, the doctors were not were telling him like you will be on a wheelchair you will never work, work, walk and he told them like no i will walk in in a year i will be dancing in a year. Uh, and they were no but they will have like a broken something a spine he was dancing in a year yeah, so they were like uh, he got from it but he told him no it's not my time now so um it it, it comes from from the extreme power of mind that he had and uh, he wrote a book uh, that is uh, extremely obscure. Uh, the book is called, uh, you might like the name, uh, Balzabab Tales to his grandson. <laughs> but very few people read this book because it's so crazy and uh, so thick. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So even me, I haven't gone through it, and he was he was sometimes like joking that uh, you should read read it twice <laughs> to understand like what I am going to say and so on. But no, I, I was not able to read it all. Uh, but why I'm mentioning this book? It contains like a very strange story. Uh, he uh, Belzebub in this book represents an extraterrestrial that is uh, flying on some this book is was written in the 1920s by the way so so the Beelzebub is uh, like an extraterrestrial that is flying in a, in a cosmic ship uh, with his grandson and they are like uh, demons uh, the extraterrestrials of uh, of extremely scientific advanced race and uh, Beelzebub is like admin uh, like uh, like like the, the king of the ship and the ship flies uh, to his homeland on another side of galaxy or somewhere uh, to a planet Karnak. He creates this science fiction thing and uh, as, as, the, as the flight is taking eons of time, uh, he is discussing everything with his grandson. His grandson has this crazy name Hussein. Like, it's like, these names are probably just created uh, by him. And this Hussein asked him, like, uh, okay, so tell me, uh, grandfather, about the structure of the world, about the universe. 
and uh, you were also expelled by the by the creator. Uh, so so uh, what have you be, what have you been seeing in the world? And he is explaining a lot of things how how crazy things like what, how how are they able to fly from one star to another in a blink of few seconds and so on so science fiction stuff but then he starts to speak about uh, uh, about a very strange race that he met once and these are the humans that are living on the on the planet of the earth and he's just making fun of them like this 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 bells about like Eastern, that they are like totally misled uh race uh, totally full of bullshit uh, and uh not understanding of spiritual things they uh they sometimes worship even me <laughs> I, am, I, I am like having having fun from it sometimes they are worshiping other things but mostly what they like to uh, the best is that they and they should also worship but they are not uh they are worshiping themselves and so he goes into this very spiritual thing of ways like uh, what is the true um, what is this true spiritual um, like this mental awareness and uh, it's full of metaphysics and things and uh, at the end he uh, it's pure magical thinking this, this 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 book is like pure magical thinking uh, and he says few uh, he's very critical in the book about the humans and about the humans how what are the f most uh, like uh, mistakes we humans do when we uh, uh, when we work magically and uh, because this Hussein is asking him like uh, so what's bad uh, if if, if uh, on that that uh, humans want to worship themselves I uh, haven't been, been we, uh, we have been like uh, the creator does not uh, care about uh, these type of uh, species like humans or other we know that so many cultures and uh, just die in the millions of years and then new ones are created so so the, the original this gnostic creator he does not take care so they should probably worship themselves right to transcend and he says yes but what is the true transcendence uh, so uh, very uh, and he creates uh, he gives examples of of so many like gods that they that the humans created just to reflect the, our own deification that we forgot that we are gods because we are through our mind and, and, and our creation that all of these myths that we were create we have been creating are just the reflections of our dreams and uh, uh, it's extreme magical system it's something like if you if you read through this and if you read through this you will realize that both of these people they're very deeply mystical thinking people that realize that no system is actually it can give you some results i see these here questions like what will work for me it works for me i learned through this i i, I need to learn this and you will realize that you have to have your own magical system that all of these um things that we are discussing all of these stories whether it's voodoo whether it's uh, left and path whether it's uh, angelic workings and so on are projections of few people maybe the system is 1000 years old maybe it's 2000 years old but it's created through human imagination it doesn't mean that it does not work but it was made by the mental mm, it was it was made by people like with this medieval guy that that was writing that was rewriting the uh, uh arabic uh, um, magical uh, uh, scripts and translating from arabic to to latin in the 15th century so so he he he, rena he rena named jinn to to spirits and so on and we just took the, the idea because we like it or with necronomicon now this 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 book this magic that so many people like and it works but it's made up and i i think that what is made up for us has this actual power that's why we like 
some kind of uh, the myths are repeating the stories are re repeating uh Gurdjieff says at the end like when they, they were asking him but how could you expect from people to read 1238 pages of very thin extremely deep text and read it three times and he started to laugh and he, he was like I don't know I just told them to read it three times if they read it three times that's fine but at the end it will not help them because maybe perhaps they should discuss the book so it's a, it's just the we have to have this mind like uh, if you want to be truly effective in magic start to create your you can use a lot of ideas from many systems but work with your own this is this chaos approach this is this modern way because we we are so overpowered by information and by so many different things in our uh, it's good to know the the symbolism to history and everything but if you will blindly go through one uh, technique, you will never succeed. If you will blindly think that I have to do A to get B, you will be not successful in magic. Yeah, a, a question, like a very good questions. And I'm, I'm starting to get an answer to your questions because I'm going to build on this. Why I am saying this? is just for me that I try to change the way how you approach magic if you want to be successful in magic. So Dakota is asking a good question. Is it okay to only just chant demon's name then ask them for teachings? Will results happen? What do you think? Why don't you try? Why don't you just maybe for you it's enough to chant because in the in the in the in the medieval uh, or in the in the old books it was just like the, the at the beginning there was a sound there was a word you can be successful not only with chanting the demon's name because the demon does not have name you can name the demon you can you can you can you can say you are representing the sound wall your true name is aleph like in Kabbalah, they were giving the name, the sound. It doesn't have to be Belial. It doesn't have to be Dantalion, Dantalion, or saying these ends over and over. These ends were created just for us to, to don't think about the ends anymore because they don't mean anything. It's just some kind of string. It's not like a, uh, some magical formula that will work. The magical formula works, but it does not have, it can't have meaning. So if you will have the power and you will say you will be invoked by me pronouncing this the wobble A A It might happen. Or you might not present anything. You might not say anything. All those saying words are like uh, it's powerful. You can ask internally. You can ask uh, in a way, like the teachings will be given to me in dreams after I perceive this ritual. There will be never demon coming up like a small familiar with a huge book and giving it to you. I know that you don't think like that. But this is the thing. It's up to you to decide the co it's not that I have to chant the name A to get the teachings B. There is no A. There is just teachings there is gnosis and to get the gnosis is this magical introspection like i am open to receive now no rules only your rules so if someone tells you it works for me if i pronounce the demon's name yes if someone tells you no you have to do a ritual of eight hours yes but it must work, you, it must be yours, you, you, you must get into the, it's not so easy to, uh, uh, to get into this moment. There is no A, there is no linearity in magic. To, to, to work on such level, like I'm describing you, of course, not so, it sounds easy, but it's not. 
because you have to do the meditation for it. You have to do this immersions, like like Gurdjieff say, it's 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 meditation, meditation, like 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 Bertio says. First two hundreds of this are just sit, meditate, sit, meditate, write things, sit, sit. It, it, it's it's not like that. We are not so. Try to do it and enjoy the process. Yeah. And you can do it with an A. <laughs> really? I, I start to I start to do sometimes magic, but, but uh, it is that if I do the ritual, I, I'm starting to do more and more simpler rituals. I, I loved ceremonial magic because I like the aesthetics of it. I never believed in. Uh, that it must be done this way. Yeah. There is a book. Which I don't like. Some of you might know Steve Savedo, who wrote Goetic Evocation. Quite expensive book it was uh, uh, by uh yeah by Haiti and press i think it's still limited version it was quite expensive and i bought it because uh this book was written in the 90s by a person that worked with very ceremonial way of contacting with the spirits and the and the first part of it are understanding the the kabbalistic uh, trees uh understanding the connections of the energy compared with our energetical system meditations preparations creating specific talismans beautiful things that keep your attention yeah and he is extremely ceremonial yeah so he goes preparation of planetary hours when you should do it how you should do it a uh, little bit of history and then he goes into the goetic demons so he speaks about the specific goetic titles and practically taking 30, 30 specific books and then he goes into then he describes the the uh the banishings and things like that and uh, he went into extreme ceremonial magic uh, he, they did it in some specific place, of course. They were trying to do evocation, so no, they were really trying to manifest the, the energies. And so they did all of these type of things ceremonially. They had swords, uh, they had specific uh, candles made from human wax, very difficult to obtain currently, of course. Um, and um, they invoked it in specific times of the day, did a lot of uh, fasting. First time nothing, then three months ago again, then again and again. And uh, his their approach was that there was some kind of like electricity outage or something in that place. They felt extremely bad. They they, they felt like there is a, a like full smell in the place. And then they heard a voice. There were two two of them, and uh, because he was starting to invoke the spirit. And was starting to read the uh, read the lesser key of Solomon invocation, like it's in uh, in uh, Mr. Matters and Crowley's translation. I call you by this and this. Show nothing. I call you again by the name of God and this and this. Nothing. I call you by the archangels and so on. Nothing. Okay. So if you are resisting to 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 show yourself, now I have your sigil, which I am going to put into the iron box and I am going to burn it. Yeah. So really, this this old ceremonial way, how uh, in, in protection circles, uh, because they were not doing this left hand path that we are. This was evocation, like forcefully showing the spirit to say it, and he was reading it from the book and there was this wind and something on the third or seventh time and there was like learn it from your head like you fools yeah and and then it went away and there was like and they felt extremely well unwell so they said like we had to do 60 banishings to get the room away from 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 negative energy the energy was unhappy because i haven't been able to learn all these texts 
So he says like, okay, so then six months later, I had to, uh, <laughs> I started, I had to, I had to learn all these texts. And then he starts and they, they are successful on the second time. Yeah, the spirit like shows and he says this very crazy story of evocation and the spirit was unwilling and so on and disrespecting and lying and uh, try to kill them in the circle. So to be honest, the thing is, and then he creates uh, the third cha uh, chapter is even the like science fiction story of, of a parallel world of demons and uh, like, with all respect, the, 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 the book is made up at least from some uh, type of things. I don't want to, Mr. Savedo is probably yeah, 20 years older than me and uh, he can say that I, I don't know nothing about it and probably he did something, but uh, I would argue with some of his uh, ideas later on, but uh, I, I don't believe the totally whole story. It's of course very readable, it's like horror story. So if you want to read like Goethe's evocation, be feared of all demons of Goethe yeah, for next two years, just read it. But um, he might have been true in one way. And that was like that if they, uh, he totally believed in the, uh, in the necessity to do uh, hyper realistic uh, ceremonial magic with all these things that were written in the 15th century and if you don't do it properly you will either be uh, hit by something or something bad, bad will happen to you or it will not work at all and i believe that they put so much energy into it that something was really happening but it was happening because they it was wishful thinking they, they were they were expecting something negative so they got it uh, the, uh, through the magical uh, power of this ceremonial ritual, they created the reality. So they did, did so many A to B to C to D that they get this X. But uh, there are so many ceremonial things that you don't need it. For example, Krobli was not doing this type of ritual like that. Abramelin uh, was invoking spirits just by drawing the magic squares and praying over it because his power of praying was so much without surface. So I don't believe in the ceremony. I like the aesthetics of the ceremony. But if you start to believe in this exact ceremony of something, then you are going to get into, into danger because our mind is able to create these type of things. People that fear these spirits, they will get a haunted house. Uh, uh, because you want it, you create this, <laughs> you create these type of things. And if you want to speak with these energies, first do meditations and then say, hey, you don't have to do these ceremonial things. So, But it's, again, not so easy just to think that I have to do light a candle and put a, uh, a, I have to draw a sigil B and I have to put a little bit of blood to the C, so C, and then I will speak with the spirits or I will get the familiar. No, it will not work that way. You, you are just lighting some candle, you have a piece of paper and you have just cut your soul. No magic for you. Because it's not about doing these linear things, it's about it's about understanding that these are just like crutches. It's it's not the the real magic is not done by these things. Mr. Savedo was able to do it because they got into the mindset of yes, we have to do it this time. We have to do it like this. So these people, these two people, this Mr. Gurdjieff who is laughing at the at the naivete of of, of humanity that we had to create these funny rules, so magic happens or that people that just say that Bertio is not a voodoo magician, because he is not. He knows about laws, but he creates, he combines his own system. Some people might love his system. As I say, like necro, uh, Necronomicon, some people are fully in it. But but they, they, they expect, okay, that they will see Neo Latotep and they will get into problems, and they will get. <laughs> so, because they are uh, uh, trying to evoke this archetype of shadow so create your own gods you don't need even you know what I, what is lucifer what is this eon of lucifer for me it's uh it's it's this transcendence 
I, I understand that Lucifer is not this fallen angel. If it is for you, okay, you will perceive him in this way, but, but your vision will be very limited because then you will just project another archetype. But it will be not this full transcendency of yourself and of doing magic. You, you are just need, you are having some kind of mediator. Offer me, become, uh, I will do a pact with you and then I will get a little bit of magic. You don't have to do acts. It's just a crutch. It's for your mind to believe that if you get into pact with some kind of spiritual archetype, you will get a boon of doing the magic. Yes, it helps you. But it's, you are doing the pact because you don't believe that you can do the magic by yourself. That was the moment when, when I, I shocked a few people here, like uh, two years ago, when I told Belial in my meditations, and I told him, I don't need you. Can you imagine it? Like that you, that you have to broke this, this fear. And the truth was like, uh, first it was the fear yeah, that I have annoyed something. Of course, I have annoyed a deep archetype in me because I needed this energy a lot. To, to get through it, but then I understand that it's just this, uh, it's part of something. And I, and I, and, but it's not totally me. As a magician, you can do all of this if you, if you, if you stop believing in all these, that it's needed. Yeah. But it needs meditation. Yeah. And, uh, this type of, uh, thing. So you can try to invoke archetypes. You can try to invoke things. You can try to invoke, uh, do experiment. What, what, what are people doing with their like invocation of their guardian spirit? Some says, and don't believe that it's a good angel yeah, or, or something. It might be, yeah, but uh, what are the angels? They are the, they are the principles of, uh, of reality. There are some kind of metaphysical laws, at least. Uh, Pythagoreans were believing in this, that they were saying that the number, numbers are sacred and they are creating the reality of the word angels, un, uh, angles. Yeah, so John D. was practically, it, the word angel comes from this angle, from, from some mathematical uh, structure. Yeah, so you can do what I did, like uh, create a sigil from, uh, from a computer and create a invocation of create a god. Call it somehow. Do a meditation and tell him you are the spirit that is the, the that is going to teach me everything, and you are going to lead me, and you are going to protect, and you are going to give me, and you are you are, but not from the selfishness of me becoming egoist because ego is very dangerous. But I don't want to speak about ego now. I spoke so much about it before. But create some kind of spiritual energy that you will name. And I, I can guarantee you that if you will do it properly and you will be not doubting that, oh yeah, oh, oh, that, that's not real, that's not real. It is real for you. But if it becomes real, our dreams can become real. Gurdjieff is writing it in his, in his I think it, there was even like a chapter about it. Yeah. Yeah. Fantasy may be perceived as a reality. I put it here. Because it is, magic can be real uh, uh, and is, is becoming real through our mm, imagination. So if you will do this, invoke that, that power. Those that were trying to invoke this inner guardian were practically creating something from themselves. But don't uh, create it maybe like this. Maybe do it even differently, like, uh, 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 like Bertia is saying, like, ask for the right energy but you must feel it and if the energy you will feel something you will tell him the name i want this name and i want you from i want this energy to do this for me not some kind of like pretending spirit or something like that you, know, you must be very deep in it you must expect from the multiverse the, the spiritual energy or uh, that is going to work for you so many people try to work with uh, this spirit, that spirit, that is good for that. No, create your own. 
because uh, mm, yes, there are some names like seventy two spirits of these or that, but they don't care about the names. You will be uh, anyway connecting with some kind of similar energy. Yeah, but if you want to try this approach, if you want to stay ceremonial, do it. It's also working. But then, uh, then stop have this linear thinking about magic. What should I do? How should I invoke a spirit? It's the, it's the most uh, frequent question that we are all getting everywhere on Facebook, everywhere. If you are asking this question, you have already failed. <laughs> the question is not about... Uh, it's okay, Dakota. I'm just... Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you have a very good question, by the way. Uh, this, this question is putting us into into this thinking and so just enjoy the the creation process of of this like if, if we you we are trying to be a little bit like this uh, this archetype this 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 first creator that is creating reality if god let's call it god or, or the prime or mover or whatever in some videos before I was speaking, maybe he wanted to just replicate himself, doesn't matter. But it was the it was the manifestation of eventually there was nothing and then is something. So he was creating all of this was his thought. So so we do it in uh, in we, we do it in the same way practically. Because we are repeating it but from another mm, position. It's, uh, if you start to have this approach to world that it's metaphysical, that everything what is thought can, is practically real, it's strange, yeah? Especially in our materialistic uh, uh, understanding of things, because in medieval times, people weren't, weren't having this type of problem. They were believing. They were, they were totally believing in God, in angels, in, uh, in, uh, in demons, in everything, like in the, in the full, uh, like, uh, express, uh, totally. Yeah, they, even, even in, they, they haven't been having these doubts. We, we now have to think about it. Uh, we, we, we try to see that uh, yeah, we are not meeting, like, winged creatures on street yeah uh, but they were building in, in in that way like that uh, at least majority of people so the faith was much more stronger but then we realized that uh, for them it was also uh, that their belief might not have been real but through that absolute faith in it they were able to achieve these connections these magicians of medieval times, they had such strong visions and fear from devils and, and demons due to the uh, Christianity that they really needed these type of things. And then it, the visions and everything, uh, they connected also through fear, yeah, but, but it worked. For us, it does not work. Uh, for our, uh, or, or very rarely. So we need a little bit more metaphysical concepts because our understanding of psychology has extremely developed. If you will be now believing in this type of things, yes, but you will, ha but uh, you will have to be really in. It's it, it's almost impossible. In this in, in this modern age, you will. Um, it will be reaching the level of insanity now. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, other thing is that magic is such um requires also not only blind faith but but also this uh this application of will yeah so mm, it, yeah it, it's complicated yeah but, but um that's why so many people fail and that's why we do not have the uh so many like uh there was a question before few people ask me like why there are not so many uh, mm, real uh, manifestations 
that why why do not do not have why we don't have it on cameras or, or or things like that because no there are no i don't believe in in mr save uh manifestation i don't believe that he saw the the the, the uh, some kind of cloud and things like that maybe it was deep uh he saw it maybe australia and so on but he's describing this like a real thing and i i, I can't uh, I just no, I I am not into it, but um, it it can have this effect. Well, um, this why why don't we have so many uh, things on camera? Uh, because if you do real magic, you are not. If you will expect this linear thing that I want to see some fire or something like that, it will not happen. But in magic, you try to change the reality of things like you want to be successful in something you want something to happen but it will not materialize immediately it, it might take uh, some amount of time it's it's uh, it, 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 there there is no um, like tempo uh, time is not correlating uh with, with with the effort of the ritual you do the ritual and uh, the the result might happen in six months it's just like that. Many people that ask for this, like uh, mo mostly people ask for money spells and things like that, or love magic. And uh, the truth is that it does not work like that. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, it it just it, um, it might paradoxes, but it is it is not like uh, we have no rules for it. <laughs> Oh, starter! This is this is very generous. Uh, thank you. <laughs> what can I say? I have to read it. Giant pure character waving flex and turning around, making the buildings in front of him. <laughs> yes, like uh, this type of uh, this type of ideas, uh, like. You might be, uh, you might make it, you might make fun of me, and uh, but I will tell you that uh, in, in in Rome, in ancient Rome, there were there were so-called pares. So these were these were these small uh, spirits of the house, and usually people believe that they have in, that they have them in statue or or something. So I, I might look like very like childish now, and you might be laugh at me. But um, uh, from my, um, I think when I was, I don't know, 15, 16 years old, I, <laughs> I, was, uh, I, I had this uh, stuffed m monkey, like 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 this small like it's like, like a small stuffed uh, animal. I don't know from where I have it. I, I think I, I, I got it from from my knees or something. And it, I had it with me for many, many years. And uh, uh, the, uh, the thing was traveling with me always when I was moving from one country or another. Because I felt that when I put that stuffed monkey, okay, I don't sleep with the monkey, yeah, but I can put it somewhere. yeah, uh, And it's still on one uh, corner of my room. And the thing is that it is like a small protector spirit for me. I am so connected with the type of thing. I always like when I go, sometimes I remember it once per week or once per two weeks. I, I, I just have this feeling. I look at that thing and I was like, hey, and yeah, for me, it works. It works so powerfully. Uh, so, yes, you can have these big flying things. You can have everything around you. It might be a small thing that you have. It might be, and it can be of tremendously powerful energy. I had, uh, mm, I had, uh, I was la once. I was, I was even like uh, when I was not living alone. I was uh, living with someone. Uh, uh, my uh, ex girlfriend hated that thing. She always like. <laughs> I don't know why she was like uh, because it's a funny thing but i know that maybe she saw that it's like childish thing so i put it a little bit away 
but she was always like i realized always in few days that she just like tossed it even more away and i was like come on what are you doing this just like a stuffed thing that is put there. i know that it's not <laughs> i was like okay so 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 the uh, because it was protective yeah of me i don't know i did not want it uh, her to feel un uncomfortable so 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 i i put it a little bit further away so yes th these are these are strange things that you can have so uh, uh, you can have your own guardian spirits you can have your own familiars you can have your own gods but remember that these gods are connected called through your power the, the, this is the thing that if we imagine that that these are just the names that we all of these cultural names of gods demons and so on they have tremendous power but they are uh, i still say it they are they are they are created by our or they were created by our uh, human uh, subconsciousness they are they are now they might be effective but it's not like uh, this is so extreme like and uh, uh it does not even like um, gets into any conflict with like but humanity might not be alone and so on maybe we are not alone maybe we are all connected in one huge con uh, consciousness but it's true that we are able to manifest these type of things through our consciousness i can uh, the magic is done by our will so try to experiment with chaos magic try to check some kind of crazy fantasies of other people mm. look you might have uh, there, there are so many popular uh, uh, popular like alternative world worlds that have so much power and impact on on human subconsciousness let's say not even in magic but uh, uh, let's say harry potter yeah or uh, or uh, some people like some kind of science fiction things like these alternative worlds and so on and it it, it creates so much uh, imagination that it's about this uh, when it sparks up your imagination you can dream about it dreams are i will speak later no uh, it will take hours uh, we, we can speak maybe more again i have to return back to the uh to the astral dreaming like, like what it represents but yes this is a good thing uh magic or lovecraft exactly lovecraft hp lovecraft yes the, the, he created something he might have been a little bit affected by the uh, by this collective uh, subconsciousness that we have so he, he he had this feeling of cosmicism and uh, yes it works it works people that work with this type of things have really magical effects like uh, i absolutely don't doubt it yeah. magic is what your heart desires with imagination and determination we can achieve great things yeah it's not only about rituals it's about your entire living I, I know that it might sound some people will say like what is the difference between between yoga or or meditation and a magician magical practitioner I think there is not such big difference <laughs> uh at the end uh, we are but we have different approach to it uh, because we are focusing on realization of our goals yeah so that's it yeah okay i think uh, so yes <laughs> that's it yeah so uh by the way uh yeah like uh, lovecraft uh, visions uh are so powerful but if you if you read for example his his novelas or it 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 has big impact on 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 your imagination and uh the the majority of connections with the spirits goes in with uh, during dreams if you have difficulties to achieve these uh, these connections during invocations or ceremonies you will get them in dreams 
So always ask for these dreams. The dreams are easier to come. If you ask for the dreams, the dreams will come. The dreams have extreme affection and can give you a lot of insight and things. And uh, if you are asking for real things in magic, do it. But uh, don't expect that it will uh, be linear. Uh, you are just uh, you are just like aiming your. If you are on the sea and you are just you are navigating the ship somewhere, and the magic is probably navigating you somewhere. I don't know better example to it. So if you want to achieve something, the ship is going that way. You are programming this reality. You are doing these things. The course is set up. But if the if you will see the island next day or in three months, this is not linear. But it is there, uh, and uh, but you must have this feeling. You must you must stay with the curse. So it's not just one ritual or something. You the more you you, you get into it, the the more you can. Have, I, I feel it with myself. If I do the rituals now, they are more effective than it was before because before of course I was doubting or not feeling anything or mm, now it works like that but I am getting to get to have like I expect more and more abstract things <laughs> so yes okay my friends I think the, our uh, uh, it's, it's still Sunday uh, evening or afternoon maybe you should try your own ritual magic or something so I will probably finish the finish the stream i want to thank you for your great generosity you were very kind. i was not expecting uh, this to, uh, like this today so probably i will uh, again buy some new books and uh, try to give you some hints and um, if you have a few more questions maybe one or two i'm very happy to answer thanks a lot okay yeah perfect then enjoy your Sunday and I hope we will see each other in the next week or so when I will have another topic <laughs> to discuss. You, you made my day. I, I, I am very happy to, to meet you. Yeah, so <laughs> take care.